Chapter Nine of Kari the Elephant by Dan Gopal Mukherjee. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Adrian Pretzelis. Chapter Nine: Kari's Travels. Sometimes Kari was used for travel. He and I went through many distant places in India with camel caravans, carrying loads of silver and gold, spices and fruits. We went from one end of India to the other, passing through hot and deserted cities, while our accustomed way, when not in their company, led through populous places and thick jungle regions. Elephants have an advantage over camels in this respect. Gangs of robbers may attack a camel and his driver and rob him, but no one dares to attack an elephant. As the animals of the jungle do not care to touch an elephant, neither do wild men in desolate places. For this reason they generally used Kari when they wanted to send pearls and other jewels from one place to another. Once we were given the king's emerald to carry. It was as big as the morning star, and burned when the glow of the noonday sun was upon it. Two epics were carved on it. On one side was the story of the heroes, and on the other the story of the gods. We left the city and passed into the jungle. Night came on apace, and we stopped. That night I watched the jungle as I had never watched it before. It was about nine o'clock. Everything was dark, and the stars were right on the tips of the trees. Below us, in the foliage, the eyes of the jungle were looking upon us. Wherever I turned, I thought I saw eyes. Kari swayed slightly from side to side, and fell into a doze. The first thing I noticed was the faint call of a night-bird. When that died down, the hooting owl took it up. Then it passed into the soft wings of the bats, and came into the leaves. And you could feel that noise, shimmering down the trees like water, in a dream till, with gentle undulations, it disappeared into the ground. The wild boar could be heard grazing. Then there was silence again. Out of the blackness then came the green eyes of the wild cat below me, and as my eyes became more accustomed to the darkness, I saw small beaver-like animals burrowing their way through leaves and brushes. I thought I saw weasels way below, and in the distance I felt the stag disturbing the leaves of small plants. Then there was a snarl in the jungle, and those gently moving sounds and quivers ceased. An aching silence came over everything, broken only by strange insect voices, like the spurting of water. Very soon the call of the fox was heard, and then the groan of the tiger, but that passed. As I was above the ground the odour of my breath went up in the air, and the animals never knew there was a man about. Men always disturb animals because they hate and fear more than the animals. Little by little the sounds died down, and the stillness took possession of the jungle. I saw herds of elephants go into the water to bathe. They did not make the slightest sound. Their bodies sank into the water as clouds dip into the sunset. I could see them curling their trunks around their mates, and plucking lilies from the water to eat. As the moon with its shadowy light had risen, I seemed to be looking at them through a veil of water. Close to the shore were the little ones stepping into the water and learning how to breathe quantities of water into their trunks, and then snort it out slowly, without the slightest sound. Soon their bath was over, 
but the only way you could tell that they had bathed was by hearing drops of water like twinkling stars fall from their wet bodies and strike the leaves on the ground this proved too much for kari he wanted to follow them i had a hard time keeping him away from the herd and despite all my urging he ran right into the river his mattress and everything that was tied to his back was wet through and through and i had to swim ashore if the emerald had not been tied to my neck it would have been lost in the water i went up a tree and waited for kari to come out of the water after i had sat on a branch a little while i saw two stony eyes watching me i looked and looked and looked a cold shiver ran up and down my back but i was determined not to fear and hate i have made myself very brave and stared right back into the shining eyes they closed in the moonlight i could distinctly see the head of a cobra lying on another branch very near mine i had disturbed him going up i knew if i moved a little he would get up and sting me to death so i sat very still soon there was a terrible hooting and calling in the jungle i heard hoofs stampeding in the distance the noise grew louder and louder and i could feel a vast warm tongue licking the cool silence of the night then the cobra crawled along the branch to the trunk of the tree then on down to the ground i who was holding to the trunk had to sit still while his cold body passed over my finger but i was determined not to fear and i could feel the silken coolness passing over my hot hand in an instant he was gone now i caught sight of kari snorting before me as i knew something had taken possession of the jungle i jumped on his back while we hurried along we heard the whining snarl of a tiger not the call of hate or killing but the call for protection swiftly following our lead being civilized we instinctively knew the way out of the jungle to human habitation we approached the village which was still sleeping in the morning greyness and behind us saw horny deer leopards and wild cats rushing after us then the boars came after us dashing out of the jungle in terror vast clouds of blackness were rising from the horizon and when the morning light grew more intense i realized they were clouds of smoke the morning breeze was warm and in a short time the smell of burning leaves reached me the forest was on fire we arrived at the village in an hour and a half the sun was already up the leopards came and sat near the houses as guileless as children the boars snorted and ran into the rice fields to hide the tiger came and sat in the open and watched the forest the antelopes and the deer stood in the ponds and on the banks of the river by instinct they knew that the water was the only place where the fire could not reach them we saw flocks of birds flying to shelter soon we saw the red tongue of fire licking the grass and the trees a terrible heat settled upon the countryside i could now go near any animal and touch him the terrible danger which was common to all had made them forget their relations with each other that of hunter and prey tiger elephant and man were standing near each other all had a sense of common friendship as if the tiger had thrown away his stripes man his fear and the deer his sense of danger we all looked at one another 
brothers in a common bond of soul relationship. This sight made me realize why the Hindus believe that every plant and each animal, like man, has a golden thread of spirituality in its soul. The darkness of the animal's eyes and the eloquence of man's mind, it was the same spirit, the same great active silence moving from life to life. The jungle was burning to cinders. The tiger hid his face between his paws. The wild cats curled up, hiding their faces. None wanted to see the passing of the terror. Later in the afternoon some of the birds that were flying aimlessly around were drawn by the hypnotism of the flames into the jungle, where they perished. If one is frightened beyond his control, fear possesses him so that he loses all consciousness of self-protection, and he is drawn down into the vortex of the very destruction which rouses that fear. The more I watched Kari and the other animals, the more I came to understand why Kari and I loved each other. We had a soul in common. I played the flute for him, and was deeply moved. I felt that if I could be dumb like he, I could understand him better. This was the lesson the fire taught me. Do not hate and fear animals. In them is the soul that is God, as it is also in us. Behind each face, human or animal, is the face of the Christ. Those who have eyes to see can always find it. End of chapter 9